second. Yeah. Okay. Because here it comes. It's the first round. He had a pretty good first round. It's not that hard. What's that? Just this whole thing. It's not that hard as it may seem. What What isn't as hard? The fight, all that. I was actually playing with him because it was easy. So this is what I saw. You tell me. First three rounds, it looked pretty good for him. Third was close. I gave it to him. It could have gone either way. But I had him up two to one. And he seemed to get a little, have a little momentum. And in the fourth round, you almost did a football move on him and checked him to the ground. Yeah. Right? He hit the can. <laughs> and then you started doing things like high-stepping, getting your, your – it's like you were getting yourself going. And then except for the 10th round, which you took off, you yeah. won all the other rounds. Like, clearly won all the other rounds. Mm -hmm. Was there something early he was doing if you were playing with him? Why were you playing with him in that situation? Did you feel that good that you could do whatever you wanted? Well, Slick Boxer Gordo is all about those things. I like to have fun. That's really what it is. And what I was missing the most was that. You know, um, doing what we do is not easy, but – that night when we go out there under those bright lights, we got to shine. And how do we shine? We got to have fun. Can't let, the, can't let the ambience of the whole energy of what's going on and the fans get to you. You know, it's your night. It's your show. You, you be the painter of that, of that canvas. Right. I talk about they, athletes write their own scripts, yeah. right? And especially it's hard to do when it feels like destiny's with the other guy. Like, this, is, this has a momentum. It's supposed to happen. And especially early in a fight, the favorite can convince the underdog, this is my night. And I thought, wait, is Taylor doing that? And that's why I looked at the fourth round. I said, oh, Teo was like, no, I'm going to get myself going here yeah. and write my own script. Is that what happened at all? It's exactly what happened, yeah. Um, I wrote my own script. I gave the people what they wanted to see and what I needed to do. And uh, in the tenth round, I gave him that round because I was just on cruise control. It's like, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not gonna let this shake me up at all. You know, I'm, I was built for this. 11, 12, those championship rounds. You gotta have a champion heart. All right. right? Now let's get to the, let's get to the, to the big news. <laughs> yeah. You have claimed after the fight mm -hmm. and what you're doing here right now that you mm -hmm. want to retire from boxing at the age of 25, having just won the title at 140 pounds. Yes, absolutely. I'm looking forward to um, really, I have so many projects and so many ideas that I really want to put into display now. And I don't think with me staying in course of training and always focusing on the next fight, it's going to give me the opportunity to do it. So, you know, I, a lot of that has to do with trying to take care of these kids out here. You know, they need that guidance. They need some structure as a role model, as an athlete, as a um, entrepreneur, whatever it may be, I'm really striving for those goals and I really could turn into reality. So no, I said this to Tyson Fury not long ago when he was talking retirement. And yeah. it's easy for me to sit suit and tie just talk about sports and get paid, right? <laughs> yeah. So you're taking punches for a living. You still got all your marbles. You're only 25 years old. You've made good money. I should be encouraging you, good, go, retire. But there are a couple of things. One, I don't believe you're going to retire because there's <laughs> millions of dollars to be made, and that's the, the, the way you know how to do it. You're trained to do it. And two, because... But what's millions if you can make hundreds? Of millions? Yeah. You believe you can make hundreds of millions outside of boxing? I believe so. Yes, I do. Well, I understand where you would get your confidence since you came from <laughs> nowhere and, and, and you've already done it on, See, in boxing. That's right? the you, beauty of it, though. Yeah. You could turn nothing into something and then you could do it over and over and over and over Aren't again. Aren't there challenges, though, like, for example, Devin Haney? It would seem to me, were I your promoter or manager, I would think, oh, look at this. Cambosis in a rematch, avenge that loss, mm -hmm. give Haney a chance to get his feet wet at 140, and then you got a Devin Haney fight. That's like a, the odds will say that's about a 50 50 fight, big marketable fight. Same promoter at the moment, it's easy to make. What do you think about that? Oh, man. I think that it's a whole bunch of clown clownery. Yeah, it, it's amusing to me. Because? You know, because I see the agenda and I just laugh. The agenda being what? That you believe if that fight were to go to the distance, Devin Haney, for whatever reason, would get the decision? No, I'm just saying, Devin Haney, who? Who, who is the that? The champion of the world, just like you were. <laughs> Barely. But he lost that fight against Lomachenko, man. It was but close, but he issue, got the decision. Though, the problem with Loma, though, was that he let off the gas in the 12th because he thought he was going to win the fight. He thought he did win the fight. To me, I scored it 9-3, 8-4. And I know boxing. I faced this guy. And I sparred with Devin. However, I knew it was a 12th that was going to decide it all. And Loma let the gas go a little bit. 
But it, it, it is tough. It I is thought the 12th was tough. close. If, I, if, I, you know I rewatched what they the 12th and gave it to Haney, although I then they I should have. You know what they the should have done? Yeah. They should have done it. They really wanted to be very smart and intellect about it. Instead of trying to make it my fight, make it a draw and give it back, they should have done that for Loma and Haney so they could have a rematch, make yeah, more money. Do you think money. the judges are sitting there somehow getting communications in their ear? Hey, score this round even so we I'm not a judge. Is... I'm not a judge. That's not I'm the a way fighter. it works. You think it, they're getting messages somehow? No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. It works uh, beforehand and after. Okay, champ. I said before <laughs> the fight with Taylor, you, you get into it. this was your Hall of Fame fight. If you come in twice, because very few fighters, a lot of guys are multi-division quote-unquote champions, but very few fighters are multi-division actual champions. They were the guy who beat the guy. They're the legit champ of that division. You are a legit two-division champion. You were the champion at 135. You're now the champion at 140. You're going to get in the Hall of Fame one day just based on that, right? But when first I, ballot, first ticket. I already I, punched you'd it. have my vote. But when, <laughs> when, when there's a guy like Haney, and that's a make like he Haney. sucks. Haney, why not, sucks. Not, why not fight him? Because he's a fake it till you make it kind of guy. And when the going goes tough, Daddy, he figured me out. That's a punk. You know, they, I'm, I'm going to have Devin Haney on the show to respond to. This. I don't understand it though. It's like, why are we helping this kid? He's a he's, the, he's wait, a puppy. Damn, he's the legit one and only lightweight champion that of the world. That was made, print, he, hand he went, made. You, hold on, for what, I, know, I agree that there were copy and paste. I'm the first youngest four belt era world champion. They copied and pasted it and put it on Devin Haney. Do we got to go if long more? If you want to call him an okay. even... If you Teofimo call him an beat Vasily Lomachenko by unanimous decision. Devin Haney, unanimous decision. What the but, but Loma, flying but F. You know, wait, now you're being <laughs> slick with it, Tail, because... Because I'm because slick boxing Gordo. I'm bringing it I see that, I, no, I see I'm that. turning the hat. I'm you're high-stepping on me. You're trying to step around. But I'm at Euro, too. <laughs> Lomachenko won champion anymore. When he... Haney was... Cha- he, if you want to call Haney... Won. If you want to call Haney an email champion, you can well, call him before he fought Cambosis. copy and paste. For whatever reason, and I agree, you were dealing with a real medical emergency, you showed championship heart going the distance and making it close. But he did take your title. And Devin Haney beat him fair they and square. Gave him that, that. Hey, they gave him that. He, you think he, you won that fight? They actually, you, all right, just to even most clarify people don't, more, and the just to clarify didn't. more, they told him that he won before they announced the winner. And the referee raised they my hand, that. but the referee raised my hand before they even called out. Nevertheless, the referee, the official is, decision, if anything, is going to be the closest judge out of the, the out of the three. The official decision went to Campos. Cool. And by the way, that was my card, too. I had it close, but I thought Campos won. <laughs> Devin Haney beat him. You know how it works since the hit. But he could drop him. He, but he won. He's the lightweight champ. And Cambosis fought a Teofimo that was ill. I should have died. Are you retiring? I am retiring. I, I, I did it at 25. Look, it's a copy and paste. What I accomplished, you know this. No one has ever done. I'm a two-time undisputed world champion, technically. The first male to ever do it. And am I going to get the push like they would push... Crawford or or Haney or anybody else or Canelo or Fury, no, not gonna get that push. Why? That's between. Well, I'm the, sure a lot of people would like to push you into a fight with Devin Haney. Of course <laughs> they would because it benefits more so of leverage. But I have the leverage. I have the card. You won't if you retire and give up your belts. My thing is like I could always get that back. I could always get something back because I've made it from nothing. I've always done that, and I could continue to do that. I'm 25. You think that I'm not going to stay in the gym and stay training? Right. I'm so always going to do that. Why not stay in the gym, stay training, and keep the, your championship distinction, which gives you more leverage when you eventually decide, you know what, there's a lot well, of money who, at who, stake who, here. I'm too good at this Devin still. Haney's not a fight for me. He sucks. That's not somebody that gets me out of my seat. Remember you told me about the coach, uh, the couch and stuff? Yeah. It doesn't get you get out me, of your couch? It doesn't get I'm me out of my you, couch. I'm telling you, it should. Devin it is good. Should. He sucks. He, he couldn't even beat Lomachenko. And the way he, he looked even like Even if a, you think Lomachenko won, that was a competitive fight. Barely. Yofimo Lopez, you are always interesting. Congratulations on a, on a right, I'm going to say it's a Hall of Fame career so far, whether or not you ever fight again. 25. Man, that's so good. Good Seven time champ. world champion. Technically, 10 times. You realize once you retire, you're not the champ anymore, right? But you're champ right now. I'm always going to be champion to the people, people's champion all the way. Teofimo Lopez, 718-954.
Honduras, Spain, Asia. There's no papers to fill it out in boxing. Like you just say you're retired and you're retired, but Oh no, it's cool. I know everybody's gonna try to, I know people are gonna try to bring that back and everything, but it's great. I like that. But eventually, you know, um I leave it all to God. I leave it all to him. If it comes to that point where I, I do come back, I come back. But I'm not. Congratulations again, champ. Yeah, thank you guys. And you can see that entire Tiafimo interview right now on ESPN's YouTube page. Next up, Regis Prograde. This is Max on Boxing. So you got Danielito Zorilla, Zoria tomorrow night at the Smoothie King Center. Um, he's a replacement opponent. How do you beat him? Uh, I, I mean, I just beat him just going out there and doing me. You know, whatever he gives me, I counter. Um, I feel like my IQ is really high, so... That's all. Just going out there, having fun, doing me. One thing in boxing, I, I, I really, I'm just a historian of the sport. I love boxing, so just going out there, having fun, and um, just doing me. It's, it's, it's really no secret to beat nobody for me. You talk about doing high IQ and adjusting and stuff like that, but in fact, when boxing fans think of you, they think if Pro Grace fighting, it's going to be exciting. He's going to bring it. You're thought of as an action fighter, but you talk about IQ and adjustments. Yeah, well, I, well, naturally I'm a fighter. Naturally, that's what I am. I'm just, um, you know, I can I can come out and be a fighter anytime I want, you know. But I do have a high IQ. But the thing is, I know I have power, and I do hit. I hit really hard, so um, I can hurt people. I think I feel like I can hurt people pretty easily, you know, when I hit them, especially with those small gloves. On. Even even in sparring, man, I break people down really really fast. I break them down really easy. So yeah, but I feel like. I want to be I, I want to be that fighter that does have an IQ and could be an action style or uh, action type of fighter too. You know, one of my my idols is Roberto Duran, and that's what he was. And so, you know, I just want to emulate him. It may have been Customato. I don't I don't I can't remember the origin of the quote, but the idea is when two tough fighters fight each other, you know who is the tougher fighter, the smarter fighter, right? Because he is getting hit less and hitting more. I hear what you're saying. So do you feel like you need to score a knockout here? Do you need to win in spectacular fashion? I know that you have a belt, but the way I see things, Josh Taylor beat you for in the unification fight. He then became junior welterweight champion. Teofimo just beat Josh Taylor. He is now the champion, but he's claimed to me uh, just on the previous segment that he is retiring. Time will tell. Do you feel, though, that if he does step away, you need to be spectacular to make a statement in a wide-open division? Or even if he doesn't, you need to be spectacular to show that you should be next in line? Uh, I always feel like that, really. You know, um, in boxing, it's a saying that you're only as good as your last fight. So I, I feel like I have to be like that all the time. I have to be spectacular every time I fight. I have to go out there and, you know, show for the fans. Boxing, you have to be a, you just have to be an exciting fighter. That's what I feel. You know, that's why I'm in a sport to entertain people. At the end of the day, it is a sport. We are here to entertain people. So, yeah, I, I want to be spectacular every time I go out. Yeah, yeah. Regis Progress, you talk that talk and you walk that walk. That's why you're a fan favorite. So you were live tweeting the Teofimo Lopez Josh Taylor fight early on. Mm -hmm. You said that Josh was looking good. He was. I thought in the fourth round, Teo kind of football checked him to the canvas. And when Josh Taylor got up, Teo started getting himself into a rhythm, high stepping, doing stuff to get himself engaged, and really dominated the rest of that fight, except the tenth he took off. Uh, otherwise, he, he won every other round. I thought by pretty obvious margins. What did mm -hmm. you think of his performance? Do you want to fight him? Oh, obviously, I've been wanting to fight him. I've been wanting to fight Tio. When since he said he he's coming up to 140, I definitely want to fight him. Um, man, listen, I think he, you know, I think he looked good. It was a good fight. He looked good. Um, and, and is that because of Josh Taylor looked bad, or did he really look good? I don't know. You know, I. But I think he looked. To answer your question, I do. I do think he looked. I did think he looked good in the fight. And you know, I'm happy for him. I don't buy it that he's retiring. I think that you know, I think he wants his money. Which you know he deserves. He he if he got he said he got paid a million dollars, which that is crumbs to fight that type of fight. So you know, hopefully you know we could do it in the future. Definitely, I definitely want to fight him. Now, in the aftermath of a fight, you have to analyze it, right? And a lot of times, fighters think, well, that's not fair. Uh, Devin Haney uh, gets the decision against Lomachenko, but hey, that's not Lomachenko from three years ago. That's not Devin Haney's fault, right? 
But at the same time, we are going to analyze where the fighters are. You just bring up, is that Josh Taylor looking bad? He did look bad the last time out by his standards against Jack Catterall. That was over a year before the Teo fight. He has since then said that he needs to move up, and I get it. He started at the weight. It's hard to stay your whole career at the same weight. Maybe it's time for him to move up to Welter. Do you mm. want a Josh Taylor rematch? Would that mean something to you? And would you go to 47 to get it? I always wanted a Josh Taylor rematch for sure. You know, that's what I've been grinding for for these last three years, a Josh Taylor rematch. But with that being said, the division is so hot right now. It's like, why would I go to 147 to chase that when there's so much on the line right now? So it's just something that I guess, you know, of course, my focus is on Zarela. But, you know, after Saturday, after tomorrow night, it's something that I have to talk about with Eddie and, you know, see what is the next move. Um, yeah, I, I want that fight. But it's so many, it's so many other big fights out at 140 right now, also. So it, it just will have to be, you know, we'll have to see what is more of a priority, basically. Now, but I definitely I'm, want Josh Taylor fight. Somebody I always want to fight was Adrian Broner. People say, man, why would you want to fight Broner? It's somebody I've been wanting to fight for a long time. I mm -hmm. want to fight Broner for like six years, you know. And and now he's saying he coming to 140. He wants to belt. Um, Mauricio was at, at at his fight, so. Maybe that might happen, but I want to fight him. I still and I still do want to fight Josh Taylor. But everything is becoming so hot at 140 right now. So we'll just have to talk about. It. I'll have to talk about. It. I'll have to talk with Eddie and you know see what is the next move. Eddie Hearn, of course, Matchroom Boxing, where you signed. Now I know you don't think like this. You have a winner's mentality. That's why you've won all your fights except the Taylor fight, which, by the way, was a great fight and a very competitive one. But from a fan's point of view, and I am a fan. I, man, I don't think fans care if you're coming off a win or a loss. The way you fight, fans are going to want to see it. If you said Regis Progress with any of the names you just mentioned, plus a whole lot more, as you mentioned, the division got hot, fans will sign up for that. Um, right. So that said, and I get it, someone like Bronner, if, if you've wanted to fight him for years, that just doesn't go away because he went away for a minute. That comes back as soon as he's active again, right? Who else right. is there? You see, you see names like... Tank Davis hopping around divisions. You know, Devin Haney's coming up. I understand there may be promotional issues. Who is on your list? You go, I want that guy. I want that guy. I want that guy. I want all of them, man. It just depends on what's the, you know, I, I don't, for me, you know, I don't, I don't duck nobody. I don't duck no smoke. I'll fight anybody. I literally fight anybody at 140. It's, you know, like I say, I really say this and I really mean it. I will, I will fight anybody. It all depends now. It all depends on the money. You know, I told Eddie, listen, I fight whoever you want me to fight, I literally will fight him. But it now it's a business and it depends on the money. It depends on what type of money you're gonna offer. But for me, I mean listen, um, you know, if I don't want so I don't wanna say Tank Davis because he's still at 135 and he's in jail right now. So I don't wanna mention him, but you know, a, a Jack Catterall, um, Matias. Um, I don't want to put Roly in there. Let me get this straight. Don't want to ever. I don't want to put Roly in there because I don't think he deserves to be a champion, and I don't mm. think he's that good. Um, I do want to fight good fighters. Um, like I said, uh, of course, uh, Broner, um, Tio, Ryan. I mean, the list Ryan can go Garcia. on, man. So many good fighters at 140 right now, and I, I really, I really will fight any of any of them. Bring the biggest names for the most money and line them up. In other words. Basically, that's it. I'm not worried about fighting nobody. I'm not scared of nobody. I just worry about, all right, are they going to pay me what I, what I feel like I'm deserved? That's all. When I'm working. Before, before I let you go, because we're running short on time, how many times would you like to fight in a year? If it's up to you, how many fights would you have in a year? About three. You know, I mean, right. you know, before I signed with, excuse me, before I signed with Eddie, it was, we was doing, it was all, everything was sporadic. So, you know, right now it's going to be more of a, you know, a structure right now. So, yeah, I, I would think about three times a year. I think three times a year is good for me. You know, obviously two for sh definitely have to be two for sure. But um, if we can fit a third one, then that'll be perfect. Three times a year, I think that's that's a lot of activity for fighters right now. Yeah, at the top of the sport, absolutely. And that's music to boxing fans' ears, I'm sure, because we love to watch you fight. Good luck.